All right. Hello, everyone. It's me, Michael. I'm finally back again making videos. We're going in a new direction this time. This time, we're going to be making art. Uh, if It's one of my favorite passions, and if you aren't into that, you can leave. But if you are interested, you can be here. And I know for people who are just clicking on this video who have no idea who I am, uh, well, let's get into it because you want to learn today how to draw like Scott Pilgrim takes off. And I'm here to teach you. I'm still learning art myself. There's always so much more to learn, but I can help you learn this today, so I will. So let's get into it. So you see here, we're going to start off with the man himself, Scott Pilgrim. And we're drawing out his head right now. Small chin, big head area. That's how it, it is in anime. And... We are going to be making his arms bigger as they come closer, as well as his body and legs, because we are working in perspective with this shot. They do normally tend to draw bigger limbs on these characters for the show, but for now it's because of perspective. And notice how I'm not adding in all the de details at once. I'm quickly just blocking out the hair, head, and other shapes. And they work with very simple shapes in the show, too, which make, made this a whole lot easier. You can see his eyes are literally just circles, as well as his pupils. His chin is basically just a trapezoid. And I'm drawing in the fluff for his coat, even though that was only painted in. I will erase that line work later. But right now, it's just there for reference. You can see how I'm making the wrinkles flow into the direction of gravity so they're hanging down they don't they don't go up think about when you're wearing a shirt the shirt doesn't just stick up in random angles does it no it doesn't hope not right now i'm drawing the jacket which was actually pretty simple he has some extra lines on there but nothing too detailed this is a very simple look for this show and you can see that i'm also turning the image reference image back on and off to create you know, a good idea of what's going on. You could see that I'm now on another layer and I am f doing the actual final details. This is where everything is coming together. Don't draw in all the details at once, like I said. Just take it slow as you get farther and farther into the process and start adding more and more details. And that's going to help you because if you keep adding all the details at once, you're going to become overwhelmed. And, oh, look. So, we are finally starting to block in the final details for that jacket. Yes, you can see that all these teeth are coming together here like puzzle pieces. And you can see it goes outward then inwards like on a real jacket. They go with the direction of gravity. See, they are all coming together, coming inward. And then the jacket is finally finishing up its nice, clean line work. Notice how I'm doing it cleanly. I start out with some scratchy lines at first, but I try to clean them up as much as I possibly can. Because you don't want scratchy lines. Scratchy lines make everything look worse, and even scratchy textures have some method to the madness. They're not just scratch, 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 scratch. You gotta learn to make them clean for the final work, and not just adding in scratchy lines, leaving it, being done with it. No, you have to put in the work. And now you can see that I am making uh, the colors here. What's really important about these colors is that because he's being illuminated by a street lamp and that he's also being hit by the night sky, he's got darker shades on him. It's not just a regular peachy skin tone. And you can note that for a lot of the other colors too, it's not just a straight flat color. There's actually some really interesting color work going on with this show something that makes it so appealing is that it's more than just simple shapes coming together to make cute anime characters there's a real 
interesting color scheme going on and you'll note this with other shows like cyberpunk edge runners where they really grab you with the color schemes and those are a real highlight of the show so you can see here it's not just a flat peach not just a flat red not just a flat blue these are all colors that are darkened or lightened and they also have mixtures of other colors because of the lights and shadows hitting them so it's more than just a red light hits an object so the object glows red no if it's a blue light and a red light is hitting it it's going to become more like a dark blue maybe even a greenish or purplish color it's not just flat colors you can also see that the coat varies <coughs> from scene to scene because it has like a lot of things hitting it you have to really consider this when it comes to adding colors it sounds like such common sense like yeah of course things get darker as more, there's more shadow on the on there but as you practice as you progress in art these are going to make things very very difficult it's a very tough thing to master it's the hardest thing i've ever had to learn i'm still learning it because it's just really difficult to just know well what color does it turn when that light or that shadow hits it you're also going to note that on the shirt here it's not just a flat black because you hardly ever want to use flat black unless you're doing like a direct comic page or a manga or something but those are exceptions notice how much more interesting the color is and how much more the detail of the rest of this is highlighted when the shirt is not so distracting there's actually a good shade of gray on it and you can also note that the zipper too it's not just a flat gray color it's blue which is strange but because it's being hit by that moonlight you are seeing the shadows and the light converge to make this blue including the little zipper down there and it's just so much more interesting of a color scheme than just flat colors. So if you're having trouble with color schemes, just grab out a different color, of just some wacky out of the blue color, and start adding that in and see if that makes it better. You can also notice that all these colors really agree with each other. They're all darker to match with the lighting and the shadows, because it's both light and shadows that make this. But you can also notice that most of them are blue or red. Colors that are on the opposite side of the color spectrum that really match together. It's really about what looks good that will make this pop. Because if you just add like purple, green, blue, yellow all together and there's no method they're all just there it's not going to look good the colors just aren't going to look interesting and here I'm gonna add in a bit of a warmer shade so that you can match that straight lamp you see in the reference image and right now I'm finally finishing up you add the highlights to the hair last thing it's just a street lamp which I add to its own layer I think that came out pretty well as you can see here I'm grouping everything together and there's our final image of Scott. I do think it looks pretty good to the reference. The expression, the colors, everything go together. And now we're going to get started on Ramona. Ramona's a bit more difficult because you look at her and you're like, the colors, the shape, they seem so precise. That's a difficulty of drawing women because they have that hourglass shape, which is also hard to do in perspective. You can see this is a slight perspective image where you're looking upward at her just a little bit. You can see that I am blocking in the head and while Scott's eyes are simply just circles, Ramona's have much more detail. They have big black lashes and she's got big circles for the eyes. I am using a flat black but it's only in moderation to help this pop. You can also notice that uh, on the Scott image that I used a discolored white to help differentiate it from the white background. Now, I'm going to do that with Ramona here. But another thing about Ramona is that because she's a woman, you have to get those curvatures just right. You have to get all those 
little tiny curves just correct so that she actually has a good shape to her because if she's looking out of the proportion and the curves don't line up she's not going to look good she's going to look like a weird blob and that's something you can get away with more on a man by drawing in more blocks and chunky shapes because that's what a man looks like but with Ramona you have to get those curves just perfect also see how I am pointing out here that you can't just fill in all the lines it's important to leave a couple lines just slightly unfinished so that when you're looking at this if all the lines are finished all of them are connected it's going to look like flat blocks and this is why some lines are thicker some lines are thinner line weight and how the shapes are not finished off makes it look better looks at, makes it look more realistic because when you're looking at something you don't see everything all at once there's different angles to things and when things get farther closer to you the lines change to reflect that distance that's why the lines for eyelash are thicker the lines for her chin are thinner so um, right now I'm starting on the jack nose and you can also see the lines getting thicker around the bottom of her torso because they're closer to us I think the hardest part of this was actually making that jacket and how it aligns with the curves of her body and how it aligns with the shape of her shoulders and her arms because I didn't want her to just become a flat block I wanted her to actually maintain those curves even with the jacket on so that she's less like Scott and has her own distinct shape you can also see I'm working here on the hair to make some of those lines thicker and this is an important lesson line thickness it conveys so much line weight is a very important thing with art when I was first starting out with art one of my problems was this thickness I was like what do I do why does it look like this why do all the other drawings I look at look so much better and the important thing is to really convey those lines really work on them you can draw over them again and again but getting your pen to make a thick stroke or a thin stroke is so much important you can see here that I am also starting on the colors where and she has a different color scheme you can also notice that the light is different it's more like a regular light so there isn't going to be too much darkening or lightening there will be shadows but they won't really be too distinct they won't really be too wild like Scott's drawing you can see here that the zipper is actually gray it has a little bit of a bluish tint but it's mostly gray because there's not that much weird light on this it's just a regular light and the hair was so fun to draw because of those beautiful colors too the animator is really ensured to give her creative design that was that still stuck with the manga but still gave it its own distinct look you see i had a little bit of a masking error here and some layers were unaligned so i had to fix those so that they didn't go over those sharply observed eyebrows there you see that i'm not focusing on the secondary color for the tips of her hair i'm just drawing in the hair first then i'm going to go back and i'm going to draw colors over the hair when i'm done i'm just not worrying about making those two colors collide right now i'm just focusing on putting in the basic colors just like the line work you want to start off with big shapes then work your way in with big details then smaller details as you progress the same is true for the coloring you can see that i am now focusing on the tips of her hair which was actually kind of difficult to get all those shapes so sharp and the mask didn't really help with that too much in this case now you can notice that I'm gonna be covering other sections of her hair you can see the little goggles little strap that was a bit difficult 
I wanted to hand paint it in at first, but then I was like, no, it'll just be so much more easier to fill it in with a mask, and that really helped. Masks are super useful in digital art. And you can also see I forgot some of those strap details there, which I'm going in to fill in now. Beautiful. You can see that the gray is actually gray there. And I see her, her, her coat has a bunch of different sections on it. So when I shade it in, they're going to be blended in, but they're also going to have the shadow retained to their own different sections. And that really helps convey the shape more than just shading in a big wide of gray right there. Adding in different sections helps convey that the different shapes are all there. It's not just a flat jacket, it's actually a leather jacket and you know how leather jackets are. They got different patches and different shapes that are all sewn together and each of those shapes has its own segment with its own light, with its own shadow. You can notice that I am using a salmony color, salmony purple color to block in some of the chin area right there. Now I'm finally focusing on the lighting, which is really interesting. You can see that it's kind of a light bluish color, which you can notice, as I said before, that the light hits it. And so now you can see that Ramona is finished. I think that this one turned out the best out of all of them. The colors just came together. It looked the most like the reference image. Now I'm going to drop it to a short time lapse for Lucas Lee. I'm not going to do anything commentary on it.
Well, I certainly think that these all came out really well. Lucas Lee is probably my least favorite because there was some really hard to get lighting areas and also just some of the colors just didn't match up as well as some of the shapes. He also came out a little bit blurry looking for some reason, but I certainly enjoyed making all these. I hope that you all learned something too because this is a really interesting art style and it's probably what got a lot of people hooked on the show itself actually seeing the art because it's very gripping visually and the story was uh, absolutely amazing and that's another reason why I, why I wanted to do this it's just such an amazing take on Scott Pilgrim which I didn't even know existed until I watched this show and so I hope that you learned something because I certainly learned something teaching you this just remember the two big things, shape and color. Very simple details and very good color make for quite an awesome looking show, if I do say so myself.